Hi, I'm Ryan. I work for Bill Simmons, and this is our Ringer NBA kickoff. We work together. <laughs> Did you hear about the Chris Long thing where he tried to compare you to Jeremy Pruitt? Where if you showed up to my house and grabbed him by the face, Max, and he just started saying, like, your podcasts suck. And I was like, Who? whoa, that, would, that probably wouldn't happen, but. Who's Jeremy Pruitt? He's the head coach of Tennessee. We got to get you to an SEC game. I had. So they're still playing college football. Oh, come on. Come on. We don't, we don't need that out of you right the now. The big thing when we do video with you now, people are just like saying how jacked you are. A lot of PED. There was some, right. there was some Triple H comparisons in the last video. And you're a huge wrestling guy. So I am. Right, right? I, it was like triple, triple R and Triple H. <laughs> Every steroid accusation is a compliment, so thank you. If you do revolutionary Ryan Rossillo, you add an R nickname in front of Ryan Rossillo. I wish I wore long triple sleeves. R. It's already uncomfortable. We, I like calling you any... Triple R. <laughs> That could be the name of that segment that we can't name. Uh, oh, yeah, you should ask people on Twitter for that. You so know you what? Sometimes your, people are really good with they that. They have. Yeah. People are good with titles. Yeah. You have this opening kind of essay slash rant slash ad lib, but constructed in your head before you do it. Right. Opening remarks that's like five, six minutes. And we were trying to figure out what would be the worst possible <laughs> title for this. We're really good at coming up with terrible titles. Terrible titles. We're, we're like, you and I will just send us, or we'll just send each other one, and we go, okay, obviously this is not going to be the title. And I'm so happy about how funny they are, but we can't name any of the things that. So My favorite one was License to Rosillo, and the I-L-L is in caps. No. License to Rosillo. There's another one that you but, like way more than that. There was? Yeah. I don't remember. Is it politically correct? No, we oh, can't, we can't yeah. do it right no, now. That's another thing. The other, the other segment title was Piss Break. <laughs> Piss Break. <laughs> Piss it Break was, just was like, a good one. Right. You were like, two days later, you go, you know what? I still kind of like Piss Break. I was like. Well, Kyle liked it. But Kyle, I mean, that's, that's our first sign of, of trouble. Not to bring him up twice, but Chris Long is so confused about Kyle. He's in like, what, what, in he's what like, way? What's his story? What's his story? <laughs> yeah. Not in a bad way, but he's like fascinated by him. He's like, I want to know more about Kyle. Well, I'm just excited that the Eagles stink this year and Chris Long's not going to ever go back. <laughs> it was my, my deep fear was them starting out 6-1, and one and, and then all of a sudden we have to backfill the Mondays with whoever. But I do think at 6-1 and one he may have been off the podcast. Thank God for Doug Peterson. So wait a minute, you're not a Peterson guy now? No, I thought everybody I, loved him. I, I think the fact that at this point that he beat Belichick in the Super Bowl now is worse than Eli Manning <laughs> winning two. Like, Belichick lost three Super Bowls to Eli Manning twice and Doug Peterson. And we, it keeps me awake at night. We were bringing this up the other day because we do that irresponsible question of the week thing yeah. where I keep pushing, but he doesn't want to do it, where I go, was the Philly special a terrible play call? Because everybody loves it. There's a statue of it. There's actually, I didn't even realize there's a statue of it. Outside of Philly. Oh, my God. Right. I want to go to Philly and throw something at the statue. Well, the Philly fans do that after they lose. So don't I have it. an irresponsible question of the week for the NBA, since we're supposed to be talking NBA right yeah, now. Yeah, this is the beginning of the NBA season. <laughs> yeah. So what do we got? We got Pelicans, Raptors. Man, hey, people forget the Raptors were pretty good the last few years before Kawhi. Here's my irresponsible question of the week. I'm stealing okay. your segment. Okay, I love it. I think it. it's okay to steal somebody's segment if you're just staring at them. <laughs> um are we sure Zion's ever going to be healthy? This was the fear all along, right? It's just so dangerous, death-defying, um, always in the air around bodies. He, his shoe blew out in college. I think all of us were worried. Remember the stock? Remember the pre-market? Was that? Yeah, he affected the Nike stock like 2.8% that yeah, day for not even, two right? hours. It was a real shakeup. It was like but, Brexit. But he, I went on Sal's podcast last week. We were talking about Rookie of the Year, and he's like, well, Zion's going to get it. We don't have to worry about that. And I was like, hold on. Like... This guy's always one landing away from something bad happening. I think we had to talk about the other candidates. We talked about John ja Morant. We talked about Tyler Harris, 25 to 1. Kobe White was 25 to 1. And I was like, honestly, those are probably good value bets because Zion playing 72 games makes me nervous. But now he's out, they said, two months. I, I think it'll be longer than that. Yeah, so it was six to eight weeks after it was like a minor thing. You're going to go, oh, wait a minute. What does what Woj have for us? Six to eight weeks. I, also, it's a torn meniscus, right. which is one of those injuries they always undersell. Do you think you have a torn meniscus? Because I, I think I have yeah. a torn labrum, a torn meniscus, herniated disc. I was going to call in sick because I'm so bummed out about the Zion thing. Like, I'm serious. Like, this is bumming me out so much. Because at the beginning of the year, like, let, let's all go back, right? The R.J. Barrett going number one thing was like a real thing. Like yeah. people forget like Jalil Okafor and the Carl Anthony Towns thing. 
Yeah, that that was not clear. That was not a that was not like start to finish Carl Anthony Towns. It was like towards the end of the year where you go, you know what? You can't take Okafor over this guy, right? Even um, by the way, it, th that's happened a lot in NBA history because I remember my whole life revolved around the Celtics possibly winning the lottery in '97. Not a lot going on in '97 for me. It's in conversation for worst year ever. Um, <laughs> But, I, love, I would I would pay ten grand to go back to ninety seven right now. There was some Duncan Van Horn stuff. No, kid, yeah, no, you're serious. Like people always April, forget this stuff. Like, I hate ah, that people forget things. Van Horn. I mean, that guy might be twenty five and ten for the next fifteen years. Do you remember Van Horn got like four million just to be trade subterfuge? Yeah, he got paid. Yeah, yeah, just to like, be in the trade. We're like, hey, we know you're done, but we want to just pay you a few million bucks. It's amazing. Just to, that's. But that's Duncan good had that whole thing about, um, well, what did he win at Wake Forest? Oh my God. How do we know? Peyton Manning can beat Florida. There's so many dumb things that people say all the time, and Duncan was like such a clear lock. And you remember, like, guys called the Spurs, be like, hey, do you want to make this trade? And Patino called. Remember when Patino blamed everybody else for everything? Well, Patino's problem was he took the Celtics job before the outcome of the lottery. And he didn't know the and salary then, cap. And then was blaming it three years later, like, well, when we didn't get Tim Duncan, it's like, you had already taken the money. You're, <laughs> you're one of the many reasons you're a liar. Do you, do you believe the Larry Brown story? Which one was that? That Larry Brown told Patino that he was just offered the Celtics gig when they were golfing together. And Patino, Patino was freaked like, out. Patino left and was like, I'm done. I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know if this is liable. But, uh, Patino was like, oh, really? That's really interesting. And he's like, hey, I got to leave. And then went and called his agent, was like, tell him, make me president $7 million a year. And then the book was Success is a Choice, which I wrote always, a column about like 20 years ago. Is that the most arrogant title you could ever have about a book? And by the way, we took 12 minutes to get to Patino. I, what about the dude on the Rockets, Tillman Fertitta? Oh, Shut Up and Listen? He wrote a book called Shut Up and Listen. That's the title of the book. That's pretty arrogant. What's your What's your bio going to be? Are you going to write it? My bio? Yeah. I'm done. I'm never writing again. I'm going <laughs> to write the biography of Triple R. <laughs> we ain't tri Somebody's got to make Triple R t-shirts. What would the title be? Me? We've been over this. Yeah. Oh, like I know whole... what my title is. I actually know the answer to this. For your book or yeah. mine? No, my book. Okay. Bet on yourself. Mm. That sounds like it's good, right? That's a grown up. It's a grown up. Title. It's it sounds like a little self helpish, also a little arrogant, which I think is important. If you're a little, writing, yeah. If you're writing an arrogant. autobiography, yeah. the, that's arrogant in itself. It's like here are my thoughts about myself. <laughs> my book is going to be super narcissistic. I already know, so I'm just going to be like the prologues and be like sorry, and then chapter one, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I. I I sit there and I, I'll go to bookstores because I'm a big, a big history guy. We can talk Normandy 44 later if you want. But I'm um, ready. I was, I was prepared. I will look at all these self-help books on a, on a table and I go, what, what is there? Like, what could not have been said at this point? You know, like the self-help book thing is hilarious because it's like, yeah, I know, but I don't want to do that. Like that sucks. I will, when you see somebody in the self-help aisle, <laughs> do you judge them? Um, I look. The when most you go to a bookstore. What are your aisles? There's you nothing. Go your history first. You're just like right into like, oh man, there's a revolutionary history section. Yeah, I'd be like, man, I don't know enough about China's trade wars. <laughs> um, I there's to me there's nothing more attractive than a smile that lacks confidence, and somebody in the self help section. You're like, nice. Is that a good place to meet? Meet, meet opposite sex, like possible relationship place. It's like, oh, you're reading Unfuck Yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a new thing. I noticed this with Shay's It's book. all swears. Yeah, it's all asterisks. That, that's all it is now, yeah. All, asterisks with like the U. It's, it's so Some stupid. guy was on the, on the bestseller list for like 148 weeks with one of those, how to fucking help yourself. I yeah, right, and right. I asked somebody, I was like, how was it? And they were like, yeah, it was pretty obvious. I was like, okay, good title though. That's the thing, it's a good title. Yeah, I gotta, when I do bet on yourself, I gotta figure out. You gotta swear. Bet on your fucking self. You could probably fucking title bet it. bet on yourself? You could title it Human Feces and it probably would sell. <laughs> That'd be tough. I think people would be like, huh, this is a turn. That's going to be Shay's 10th book, Human Feces <laughs> and Other Things. 
from the producer, from the author of movies and other things, <laughs> basketball and other things. Because how many other things are there? At some point, you'd feces yeah, right, is up right. on deck. You can't have that many interests. Boats and other things. Like What's wrong? Yeah, boats. I'll get the boats on paperback. So the Zion thing, we're I'm both so bummed out. I'm so glad you did it. Right. All right. We're both bummed out. Um, this was our latent, most awful fear the whole time. And it reminds me, I'm going to do this very carefully. Don't take this out of context. Right, Odin, just the fears, because he had been injured and injured and banged up, and we didn't love how he walked, and there were all this stuff, and like, you know, there's some red flags start going off. With Zion, it was all about just how his style and just being scared for him. The same way, like, some running back that is just every time five guys are taking him down, at some point you're like, oh, dude. I'm actually worried for you. Yeah. Can you not play like this? Sure. I don't think he can play any other way. It's what makes him great. So I do worry about it. I'm uh, 100% with you. I am actually, even though it's the start of the NBA season and all the excitement, you know, because as much as we love this league, there's just been too much of the last two days where I go. I just want it to work out. I want it to be okay. And, you know, I love that city. And I love that New Orleans, through all the stuff they had to deal with with Anthony Davis, and it wasn't all on him. You know, they didn't do a good job around him. The team was hurt all the time, whatever. But to then, you know, I'm not going to say upgrade because I think Anthony Davis is that special. But to go through what they did, and then it was like, oh, by the way, you get Zion now. And when we watch Zion, you know, the beginning of the year, as we got derailed on the whole thing, it was a real thing with front offices that you talked to about R.J. Barrett. It was a real thing. Like, John Morant was not on the radar unless it was, like, a good front office who's like, hey, by the way, it's John Morant because the guy's, like, nuts, okay? Yeah. So the jaw winning rookie of the year, like, there's part of me that's like, what if John Morant is just insane? Because everything we saw from him is like, this is all really good, and there's no reason why he can't do that. And sometimes I think about, like, the gap between college and the NBA, and we know how how staggering that gap is, but sometimes for like really special players, it actually isn't. And you're like, okay, well, if you were this good and this special and saw the game the way you saw it, like Ja, there's no reason why he couldn't do that in the NBA. But to and, see, his, and his teammates are much better. Yeah, and but to see to see Zion go through this, like I just don't want, I'm so afraid of like three years from now, you and I are sitting here going, you know, I think Zion and Kevin Love with the Cavs are like really good comp. You know, if Zion could ever be healthy, you know, like if I get another Markel Fultz thing where it's like, if you, yeah. you, you go, what do, you, what do you mean? If, like, we already know the answer, and I don't want Zion to be that because all of us knew about the injury stuff, the way he, the way he, he put on 100 pounds. Do you know he was 175 as a freshman? In high school, and now Jesus. he's two seventy-five. So that's a hundred pounds in four years. And you and it scares the shit out of me. Durability is the most underrated NBA trait, because even like somebody like James Harden, that dude has missed thirty-nine games in ten years. He the amount of punishment he takes, um, you would think like, ah, there must have been one year where he no. broke his wrist no. or like separated his shoulder. It's like, no, that dude's just built to. Some dudes are just built to do this, and totally. With Zion, like his body's built to do this, but I just wonder about when somebody has ups like that, it just makes me nervous. But you mentioned John Morant. You know, I like to read the preseason stories and you can kind of filter out the bullshit to the real stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just clear that people like to play with him. It was clear last year in college, listening to his teammates talk about him. It's clear now in Memphis where people are just like, yeah, it's awesome. I, I run the floor on a fast break, he gets me the ball where I like it. And, just seems like one of those guys. I think there will be a narrative probably, not Thanksgiving, maybe a week before, where people are like, maybe we should have been talking about John Morant. That'll happen. I um, think he's gonna be an immediate success. Yeah, I totally. I, I couldn't agree more on that. And going back and looking Stop at Stop agreeing it, with me so much. You should well, have been like, no, I don't agree. You wanna talk Doc Rivers? No, let's do, what, can we talk about Tyler Harrow and Thibel, my two favorite players in the league? Okay, well, did you watch Thibel play any offense? I don't care. <laughs> I know you don't you care. You know what, just have him, don't even have him go over half court. <laughs> just like, what's that in Iowa, the it's girls lacrosse. basketball, when they can only have three people go on the other side? Just keep Thibel on the defensive side. Imagine how great that would be. That's what he should do. How don't much better would the NBA the be with side. hockey shifts? It'd be great. Do you think hockey is overrated because the guys get timeouts? I, the thing with hockey I've always wanted to know is why they get so tired in like 105 seconds, 110 it's seconds. unbelievable, right? But you then can they can go to the it, bench, right? have some water, and they suddenly regain strength. It would be like if they were doing this during sex, it would be really weird. Like, I'm going to give you another 105 great seconds. Now hold on. 
Now I need five minutes. Hold on, here we go again. Another 105 great seconds coming up. I uh, I'm double shifting. I'm going to 200 seconds. I need a break. Yeah, I think it'd be I, weird. I think if the guy was like from Prague, people would be like, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with this. I used to have a Prague T-shirt that said "Check me out." Get it? Check me out. Check me out. Yeah, Czech Republic. That's pretty good. Check me out. You're That's pretty good. We add that to the Triple R <laughs> merchandising store. I got a t-shirt guy that I'm working with. You're right not now. in on thigh bowl. I feel like I everybody's got to decide right now <laughs> oh, what so they you, stand right, for. Right. Okay. And I'm like, I'm in on Tyler Harrow. I'm in on John Moran. So give me, give and me I'm all, in on thigh bowl. Right. Right, I'm so in on those three guys. Let's do this. I don't want to hear that I jumped on the bandwagon no, in January. No. I'm in right now. I'm on those three guys. Okay, John Morant. I think thigh bowl will play crunch time. John Morant, love it. Um, let's let's do this right I'm now. Also, I gotta say, I'm entertaining being in on Kobe White. I'm like 80% there. Do you honestly think Zach Levine is gonna let that guy win Rookie of the Year? That no. was that was the oh, thing where when you brought it up, I go, I made a mental note and go, don't don't let him get away with that. And there's no way. There's no way Zach Levine. Like, look, it's awesome that Zach Levine worked out on the beach. It's awesome. His Instagram stories are fucking killer, man. Stop taking the worst shots. My thing with him and Devin Booker and some of these other dudes. I don't put Devin Booker in No, his no, spot. it's just like, just get to 40 wins once, and then I'll take you more seriously. Like, I, yeah, like Zach Levine, great guy to have in a fantasy team. I was in a salary cap fantasy league draft on Saturday night, and he went like, I don't know, 16, 17, 19 million. Pretty good value, because he's like a $30 million guy for 19 million. So it's like, oh, that's. Who went one? Zion. Zion Each team went, had three keepers. Oh, so it's key, okay. So we how kept, many teams? Is that thirty guys? Sixteen teams. Oh Jesus! Who's so in this we league? kept Devin Booker and Rudy Gobert for a combined fifty-one, and then your boy SGA, uh, who's now in OKC. I love. We had the second pick in the draft. Yeah. First guy takes Zion. Not not worried at all about the possible knee injury, and then we just get John Moran at two. So I'm like, now I'm all in on John Moran. Now I feel like invested. Didn't you guys have a rule, and this is me going back, did you have like a no Shaq league or something at one yeah, point? Yeah, I had a... You weren't allowed to take Shaq? There was two years in a row where if you took Shaq, you lost your six pound round pick. <laughs> Called it the Shaq tax. Because it was like honestly unfair. If you won the first pick, you had Shaq, he's 29 and 15. There's no other center remotely close to it, and it was just too big of an advantage. That's gotta be the last time that's happened with a basketball player, right? I feel like such a loser that I remember that. that the Shaq tax? It. I think I, we talked about it recently. No, but we had we had like a researcher. This is why, why I didn't like you for like two years. Um, it would be like a researcher. What who, did I do? And he would be like, well, Simmons says, like every pre, pre-show meeting. Oh. And it just absolutely drove me crazy. And I'd be like, I it, get it. It shook your confidence or you no, just were annoyed No, I was sick of hearing me. about you. I was just like, hey, I get it. He's good. Like, you know, be like, hey, what do you guys think about, you know, with Jay Cutler? Well, Simmons said... Like, we're opinion people. Sorry, I shouldn't have done this now, and now it's I apologize, I feel bad. I didn't realize this was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, else, who else are you in on? In on... Um, Those are my three rookies that I'm in on. I don't like the situation. Oh, oh I'm in on uh, Carson Edwards. So you still have one more? No, I'm just, I don't think there's a limit. Carson Edwards and, uh, and no. I think Grant Williams is gonna be good. I'm not so as in on him Celtics. as Thibault. No, I just like those guys. I still think they screwed up the draft. Like the Romeo Langford thing, I'm not going to get over for a while. But um, No, I think the Langford pick was a bad pick. Like I went back and I kept watching. I kept watching. I'm like, see it, see it, see it. And I go, I just don't see it. It's so, just too risky. Now, I Why do, don't they take the guy who New Orleans took two picks later? If you're well, take a Alexander Walker's one of my favorite guys in the preseason. And it looks like he's going to play. You know what I liked about him too, and this is you know what, all the different things that we do. Like, do you have? I'll follow up on this, but like I'll have things where I go, hey, stop doing this thing when you watch players, or like stop having this rule and adapt to this, right? Because you, you need to figure things out, and the game has changed a little bit. But Alexander Walker, when he played all those lottery picks against Duke, when he played against all those dudes at UNC, you go back and watch those games. He was like, yeah, I, like I'm I'm at your level. Like you yeah. always had a really good mellow theory, which I thought was. Was, it was like a pre-show meeting. But like Simmons says, when Melo was in the playoffs, he didn't look at LeBron or Kobe or those guys. And I granted, I know he lost all those playoff games. But he didn't look at those guys like, oh, man, those guys are awesome. Like He thought he was in their neighborhood as a dude. And I this, think that's like a really important thing. And that's what I saw. This is, saw, a, this is right. Reggie Miller. Yeah. Reggie Miller 
was not as good as anybody from his era who no. was considered the top eight guys. But when he was in a playoff series with Michael Jordan, he was like, hey, it's my peer, Michael Jordan. It's yeah. like, you're insane. But he honestly carried himself like that was his peer. And I think Carmelo's like that. I don't know enough about uh, Alexander Walker, but. He did that. Like, when you, there was one Duke game, you know, because I was like, all right, stop watching all the Duke guys, because it's, you know, I mean, it's hard to not watch three lottery picks. We didn't but. have to watch Cam Reddish. She was just standing on the side. <laughs> the Cam Reddish breakdown was, it got easier and easier as the season went along. It's like, oh, there, yeah, that guy not moving. But yeah, the Langford thing I didn't quite understand, but I do think it is worth, like, in the moment, when you're a fan of one of these teams and you're picking 16, you're picking 17, you're like, oh, this is our first rounder. Like, once you start getting in the middle down, it's like 50% or higher bust rate, especially but in the 20s. Like, we've it's, talked it's about it, close. though. I just want, I want somebody who I know has one elite skill. So I'm what's Grant there. Williams' elite skill? It seems like Grant Williams is a really, really high IQ. I am always in the right place at the right time doing the right things at all times. And I think that's his elite skill. You know what I love about the Grant Williams thing, because he went 22nd, is that he wouldn't have gone in the first round five or six years ago. Well, because teams know now you can play him as your small ball five. But that, I mean, the reason I was so high on thigh ball, and I actually had like a Twitter meltdown when they traded the pick. So I thought for sure they were going to take him. I just know that guy in a playoff series is going to be in a playoff series. and be like, you know, like what, 22 years ago, the Celtics had Bruce Bowen? You were going a couple of those games. Celtics were terrible. Bad seats. Patino. I went one time just to watch. I, we're bringing up Patino again. But I would sit at home and be like, how is Rick Patino yelling for his team to rebound on a free throw? Just screaming yeah, at them. Like, like berating them. Like Pierce. Because Pierce was like the young guy. And like Pierce listened to him a little bit more. And Tuan and those guys were like, I don't want to listen to this guy anymore. And he'd be like, Paul, rebound. And you're going like, can you imagine being an adult? And having a guy in an And they NBA were making game. 18 million a year. They were so bummed out by him. But I remember going, I've seen Bruce Bowen in those games. He couldn't shoot. He was one of those guys, like teams were seven feet off him. But he was so good defensively, and everybody hated playing against him. And then they got rid of him after the year. And he, I think he went to like Philly, he went to Miami. Oh, well, and Pacino, always... Pacino again. But he said he's like, I trade my grandmother before I trade Bruce Bowen. Yeah, and then he got rid of him. And then he got rid he of him. He's a pathological liar. But I remember following him on the different teams going, he's going to find a team. Because I had gone to probably 25 games that year. And I was like, this guy at some point. And I feel that way about Thibault. I so just you feel just, like. You look at, you know, one of, one of the things I loved about the over-under thing that we did. Yeah. Is it, you can sit here and like everybody watching right now, like you know you have like a thought, right? Like a thought pops in your head about all 30 teams. But when you actually start looking at every depth chart, which is what that over-under makes me, you do, and you're like, well, I'm eventually going to do it anyway. You go, like, Alex Lenz starting for the Hawks? Or, wait a it's minute. a lot the, of those moments. The Hornets are in the Premier League? <laughs> uh, you know? Like, when I was looking at the Hornets roster, like, that was the most uncomfortable I've been since I saw Kendall rap. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, it changes. When is this going to end? The OG thing? It's terrible. L-O-G. Um, the Sixers are so much more talented, one through eight, than the Bucks are. It's not right? close. Yeah, like, are we nuts on this? No, and we, what was the segment you wanted to do about people were kind of out on, or, or like the Trubisky segment? Set that one up, because this leads to the Bucks. So when I think about like certain players in the league, and you go, why do we keep asking the question when we have the answer? Like, Mitch Trubisky is not going to be good, OK? And I remember we had Larry Fedora in, his head coach at UNC, and we asked about Mitch being drafted, and it, it isn't it isn't like the things he says, it's the things he doesn't say. And Fedora goes, well, you know, if he's got this, he's got this, he's got, and like within 10 seconds of the answer, I'm like, he doesn't think he's any good. I'm like, he's not saying it, because it's his guy, and you can't do that, especially in college, like you can't do that, you know, recruits, the way it works, like, oh, that guy just went on a show and trashed his guy. He's but like, none of his teammates came to his birthday party. Oh no, it was draft day. That was Connor Cook, was. remember? That was the Michigan State guy, I'd be like, eh, bad parties. He had a late night, no one showed up. <laughs> Although, if you have a late night in college and no one shows up and you're the quarterback, it's tough. A lot of people should be showing up. Yeah, everybody should be like, I don't so even Trubisky. like the guy. I'm so, Trubisky. Sorry, no, no, no. It's, it's, uh, this is all relevant. This is really good content. Um, we know the answer to the Trubisky question, so we should stop asking it. And there's a group of NBA players like that, too, where we go, oh, you know, this, this, and, and you know, we do this all the time with these guys. We keep doing all these qualifiers. So you have that with what, the Bucks, or you have it with the Sixers? I think the Bucks are a good one to bring up because I just don't think you can win a title if Chris Middleton's your second best guy. 
And when I was trying to figure out, I didn't want to pick Sixers Clippers for I know, a final. I know. Everyone I, had it. Like I, Zach was here yesterday. I was talking to Zach. Who do you have? He's like Morris. Oh, Zach Love. Oh. Sixers Clippers. I'm like fuck. Everybody has Sixers Clippers. And I just can't get there with the Bucks. It reminds me a lot of the 2010 Cavs, where they had their awesome he the MVP arrival season for LeBron. He was unbelievable in those playoffs. They didn't have quite enough. They couldn't get past Orlando. And we were all kind of like, hmm, it's not a good sign. He averaged like 37, 12, and 11 in the series. They still lost. That's bad. <laughs> and then they they were going, all right, so we've added Shaq. He's 330 pounds. Um, I forget who else was on that team. It was like... S not Richard Lewis, but somebody kind of like that, like like 2015 Richard Lewis, Antoine I, Jameson. Wait a minute, what what roster are you talking the about? The 2010 Cavs. Oh yeah, yeah. When they were just kind of, and it was clear they didn't have enough, but we all kind of talked ourselves into the Cavs again. Is my point. And I feel he that was way on about the cover the of Sports Illustrated. I feel that way about the Bucks. I I don't think they added enough. I think the Brogdon thing is a huge. Lost I don't blame though. Brought. I don't blame the Bucks for going 80 million for this guy, and we know his injury history. Yeah, like, no, I, I don't either. I don't, I'm right. just saying I'm comparing them to last year's team. You know what you now just they did? have no safety blanket for Bledsoe, and I don't feel like they have trade possibilities, unless Chris Paul. Uh, he would love to go to Milwaukee. I'm not sure if it's a like for all the people who are like oh Chris Paul, Chris Paul, like he'll probably get traded. Like he's probably going to get traded. I, I predicted today he won't. All I, season. Because I, I don't think Miami needs him. I like Miami's team, and if they make a if trade, Dragic I think is it's hurt, Lowry. If Dragic is hurt and Presti can get off of the rest of the Paul, because, I mean, what is it, $44 million in the player option two years from now? Yeah, but not this year. This no, year, I'm saying, you know. The Bucks trade, I think, is it's Bledsoe, Ilya Sova, and George Hill. I think all three have to be in it. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that changes their destiny. And then what are you getting with Chris Paul, a guy who can play 30 minutes a game in the playoffs? Uh, Masai Ujiri on the court right now celebrating the Raptors championship was not hassled by security. Not hassled by security. No, they let him. They recognized him, and they were good. Uh, 2010. Great job by him. He's holding his ring right now. LeBron, 39 minutes a game. Yeah. Mo Williams, 34. Anton Jameson, 32. Oof. Anton Jameson. Tough spelling. Fe I can say that though, because my spelling is not awesome. It's a birth certificate spelling error, I think. Yeah. Do you think they Happens. just they're just like, there's an E in it, whatever. Don't say anything. Uh Vera Zhao, who I always loved. Me too. Once I once I realized, like, oh, this guy's not a star. Like there's this delayed thing with some of those guys where you go, oh, wait a minute. Appreciate like what Vera Zhao brings to the table. And that was one of G GM LeBron's first really bad moves. Rivera was good for like a month and a half. He's like, well, we should give that guy a massive extension. They're like, sure thing, LeBron. And then all of a sudden, Rivera was one of the most overpaid guys in the league. But yeah, they just didn't have enough. Delani West, Anthony Parker. Yeah, Anthony Parker. Jamario Moon, 61 games. They, this is when they were shopping J.J. Hickson everywhere. Like, remember who they wants J.J. Do, Hickson? Well, remember they wouldn't do Hickson for uh, Amari? He was the... Earmuffs Gallagher, he was the uh, Roddy Boubois of the late 2000s. Oh, I love Roddy Boubois. Untouchable. Like Roddy Boubois, can't touch him. Untouched. Tony Parker and two first-round picks for Roddy Boubois? No. No. How does that happen? Future where, Hall of Famer Where Roddy, Roddy Boubois. Boubois at one point becomes the most untouchable player in the league. Because that was a real thing. Like, that was a series of, like, uh, Roddy Boubois. It happened last year with uh, Josh Richardson, where they wouldn't trade him straight up for Jimmy Butler. And then they traded him for Jimmy Butler. I think they finally realized, like, what are we doing? Josh Richardson's a nice player. I love that Delani West was on the team. Let's see. When, all right, quick guess. Last year, Roddy Boubois played in the league. I'm going to say 2010. 13. What? Four years with the Mavs. Yeah. Oh, man. That was it. How much cash did he make? We, we had a segment called Who Made More Skrilla, and then it got stolen. Who made more Skrilla? Yeah, Skrilla's. What do you mean it got stolen? Who stole somebody, it? Somebody else took it, and they were like, oh, we're going to do this thing where it's called Who Made More Skrilla? I obviously was furious for three days about that one. $5.7 million for Roddy Boubois. And he, he's still a young guy. All right, so do you have, do you have other guys then? So like, as, as I bring up, oh, hey, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it anymore. 
Like, who, who do you have as you start the season where you go, I already know the answer to this question? Well, I just gave you one, so you're up. It's snake draft. Westbrook. They're going to win a million games. Yeah. They're going to do a great job staggering those guys. I, uh, I think all of us need to realize, and I think everybody has, actually. Like, we're so impressed with what they did. By the way, Adrian Griffin being announced right now, Raptors assistant coach. Smart at bat, smartest basketball player I've ever seen. Do you remember? I've never seen anybody with less physical skills do more. I, I try to explain to people how impressive it was watching Adrian Griffin those years, where you can't, you can't, you just have to be like. He'd be guy. like guarding Vince Carter, and you'd be like, "You're a hundred times slower than her. How is this happening?" Right, and him. Um, I, I didn't mean her. <laughs> that, that wasn't a Vince Carter slur, but <laughs> uh, it was a speech impediment thing. No, uh, Westbrook. I, I just, yeah. I don't care. Like, if they win sixty games, people are going to lose their minds. They're gonna be like, here it goes. We're gonna we're gonna hear it. like there's such a playing the result thing in what we do, where if the Rockets win a million games and they're the one, like they could legitimately be the one seed. I'm not gonna be surprised at all. Me neither. And the way people will talk themselves into that is gonna be so much fun to watch. Did you hear about this stuff with them with China? That was really fucked up. All kinds of stuff. Jesus. Well, I was told. Can I tell you a Westbrook thing? Yeah. There was a clip like three days ago. It was when, you know, the, all the same, well, you follow a lot of the same people where they'll post like these little mini clips from games and then they'll be all smart about, try to sound smart about basketball about them. I enjoy those people by like the way. Like Jake Zapper? Not demeaning them. Um, so it was a Westbrook clip of, he was breaking somebody down and he had a chance to do the, the pull up terrible 18 foot foul line jumper thing he does. That Maury, he's been doing for 20 years. Maury's favorite shot. And he was about to do it, and he actually stopped and pulled back and reset from the three-point line, pulled this guy back out, and then went by him. And whoever tweeted this clip was like, Westbrook gets it. Like, all everything Houston was saying. Did you almost say something? No, I was just like, yeah, he gets it because we're in the preseason. When we're on TNT in February, guess, guess what shot he's going to be taking? The 18-footer on the foul line with a hit in his face. I don't think he gets it. I don't believe it. I have to admit that I did a little Westbrook slander myself recently. Um, I, I hit send on it. and You did? Yeah. Did it feel good? It felt so good because everybody <laughs> got it. <laughs> like Everybody got it, right? I'm like, boom. Uh, boom, right there. <laughs> it was like, who's going to take it out on their former team the most? And I'm like, Westbrook is going to take 100 shots against Oklahoma City. And then when they're up like 30 in the fourth quarter, he's going to dunk on Abdel Nader and be like, just. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be like, whoa. And the thing is, is like, I don't give a shit about the Westbrook thing anymore because I watched him do those punching exercises, which is my favorite thing ever. It's like still some work to do, room to grow, because no one wants to be like, I'm a badass. Look at me punching a bag, like because everybody's afraid of like the trolling and how knocked they're going to get. But it was a soft, it was a soft left. I don't care. Soft left. Do you Soft. think he's a right-handed fighter? I just, after that clip, I, I would have adjusted his PER just based on the workout. Well, he's never been in a fight, right? No, I think he's one of those guys who gets super mad and is like the most intense, which I actually do respect the hell out of, which I was always like my caveat with him. But um, you know, I was on one of my favorite Instagram feeds right now is an Instagram feed called Fighting Athletes. They just show fights from different sports. And Danny Ainge, they showed him recently. Is Dale 3 fight? No. Is Dale 3 Another him. fight where Danny Ainge got his ass kicked. Daryl Walker ends up like punching him. Ainge is just like kind of sprawling. He, Ainge's move in a fight was always to try to tackle the guy, which is like, I don't know why that was. Maybe it's like. Do you remember the Sedale 3 wanna, one? Sedale 3 hit him open hand and staggered him. Staggered And him. he was like. Right. I had, I had But this that. Daryl Walker one, he hits him like five, six times, and then Ainge finally kind of tackles his leg. And it's like, when someone's it punching now. you, punch him back. This is almost like desk cock right now. This so anyway, um, yeah, fighting athletes for as long as it's on the internet until it gets taken down. I'm so, I probably just ruined it now. I'm a big fan of these, these motorcycle videos where it's like all posted by motorcycle guys, and I brought this up with the Chris Long podcast on Mondays. And I gotta be honest with you, like the bikers always look like they're wrong. Like the Whoops, two. that's not good. That's, the, that's not good. No, go to Instagram, fighting athletes. 
Oh, really? Yeah, that, it's on there. God, Through the miss, Instagram account, Fighting Athletes. I'll I'm, kill time as you do that. I miss the garden so, so much right they now. They also had the Red Sox fight where Coco Crisp charged the mound on James Shields. I was, and I'm James old Shields was like, I'm ready for this, and threw this over, Kermit Washington right. right hand. And Coco Crisp did some Matrix shit and like leaned backwards and ducked it and then tackled him. Oh my God, Ainge just got, oh, and then he I, smashed that's what I'm his telling head you. Ainge got too. Killed. Yeah, Ainge, I don't, was he even trying to throw a punch in this? Can you rewind that and show the camera? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, this is some good video right here. Can you see that? Ignore the tabs, they're all my investments. Can you see it? Is it on? Yeah, look at that. Ainge just... So Ainge, like... Were you an Ainge guy, though? But Ainge has two 10-8 rounds that he lost in <laughs> basketball fights, <laughs> which is really hard. I had the Sedale three punch cut out of a newspaper, and I inserted it into my Trapper Keeper 86. Do you want to hear all of Larry Bird's fights? I can do this off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah, wicked bad. Alan Bristow, he kicked the shit out of that dude. Alan Bristow knows it, too. Okay. Foul line, something happened, the legend just popped him, and then it went on the ground and did like the, you know the guys, in the, when they get the guy on the ground and they're just doing multiple punches at the same time? He did that thing. Um, he had the Dr. J fight, which in my opinion is a no contest. I don't feel like he lost that because Barkley came behind and held his arms behind him. Yeah. I don't count that one. Um, Marco Ravaroni preseason game. And then... Um, there's one more. Now, it's, it's somebody on Cleveland. I'm going to say Phil Hubbard, who he also beat. So I have the legend. Oh, Phil Hubbard right now. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just get caught in a wormhole. I, I was have, in a wormhole the other day of Nigerian television. You ever watching that stuff? No. I think I've had this theory about myself. I think I could move to Nigeria and be one of the biggest movie stars in the entire place. <laughs> I don't know why you guys are laughing so hard, but uh, I like I watch it and go. I are could, these all of Larry Bird's yeah, fights? Yeah, I could tighten this up. Like I watch, I watch all this Nigerian television, and I go, "There's, there's different themes that you guys are missing out on." Oh, this is when the legend took him, or the, uh, Lambert took him down. This would be a good Palooza video for us, where we just talk, but there's fights showing. Remember what was the name of that bar in Boston that had the hockey fights, in, across the street from the Garden? Uh, the Harp Halftime Pizza. Halftime pizza, yeah. And they would. That's so, not a bar, though. Well, it was a pizza, yeah, but they right. were the it was bar. Just open late. And when I was a kid, they would just have these three TVs with hockey fights, and you had no idea I got them. This was like way pre-internet, and it was just two hours of like the Bruins fighting people, and it was like the place was packed. What a terrible idea! <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the scent of violence at all times in Boston. Um, so who, who? So your guys, Westbrook. My guys, Westbrook, and it's not. You know, look. I have one. I've, I've already done this, so I don't need to do it all again. And I always feel like I have to like also point out the fact I respect how hard he plays. And I would like to talk about his teammate Harden because they're lifelong friends. Like whenever anybody does like huh, childhood friends, and you go, were they childhood friends though? I don't know. I think famous people lie about how close they are with everybody. I once said that to Danny McBride. He was like, oh yeah, the Beastie Boys, and I love Danny McBride. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I was like, are you guys like friends? Friends? Or are you doing the thing where it's like, hey, you're famous and I'm famous, so here's a cell phone number and we'll never get together? I think you have a lot of those relationships. That's bullshit. I really resent that. <laughs> I think you were friends with famous people, but you're not. No, I'm really. not. You're I'm not, not really. friends with famous people at all. Uh, Just Jalen Rose. Jalen Kimmel. Jalen. Jalen's like super famous. Why well, work for Matt Kimmel? Matt Damon. Um, you're not friends with Damon? Could you text him right now? No. Could you FaceTime him? Nope. Who's the best guy you could FaceTime right now? This is the, now you're doing like radio show bits. Coming up next, how to save baseball. <laughs> Coming up next, the shift. <laughs> okay, I have right, another. Right. Who, who do you have? I'm sorry. I have another, I'm not sure I believe in this guy guy. Buzz Bud Siegel, right. I'm not saying I don't believe in this guy forever, just for this upcoming season, because I picked them as the one seed in the West, and he's still the person I can't get out of my head is Jamal Murray whether I can trust Jamal Murray in four straight playoff series. Because I think when he's good, he's good. But there were still those games when it was like, oh. And you kind of knew right away. It was like, oh, this is going to be the Jamal Murray game when he sucks. And everyone's talking about, and I said it myself on the over-under pod, it's like Jamal Murray, all those playoff reps last year, that was awesome. Now he's ready to make the leap. And it's like, 
That might just be who he is. He might just be a guy who's like this. I hate that we're... That's my big I, fear I, I with hate, him. I hate that we're agreeing this much, but I don't know how anybody could look at Jamal Murray any other way. Now, look, if you're with the team, you're in the building, and you start seeing those things, like, it's always cool, too. Like, you'll hear about a guy, and you're like, man, this guy right now is killing everybody. Anthony Simons. But I... I, I look at the Roddy Boobah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, really, really, really. Would you Every do Simons? Would, would you, you do Davis for for Davis. Uh, uh, dude, Anthony Davis? Maybe with he, one Laker pick, you gotta resign him. Um, you're right. How could you watch Jamal Murray and think anything other than like, do we know? Can I put you down for 25 in a road playoff game? And, and we I still can't. think the number two guy, even Toronto last year, they win the title. One of the reasons they won the title is their number two guy actually showed up in the playoffs, Lowry, who we just thought for years and years couldn't do that. Well, no, we weren't wrong about that. Like, I don't like that. But thing he should. We, we do this thing where it's like, okay, you have all of this evidence for years, and then you did something counter. I'm not saying we were wrong right. retroactively. We were I'm never wrong about Kyle. It Lowry. took him seven years right. to get to the point where he kind of came through. I, he I did. actually he did. really like the way he played in the postseason. I didn't think he had it in him. But I think it took years and years and years for him to get to that point. I don't think Chris Middleton will ever get to that point. Murray, I think, will get there. I just don't know if it'll be this year. So he'd be my second guy. So who are you doing my for third your finals? Guy will be Alex Caruso. I can't wait until LeBron learns his name. Do you uh, know? I was just talking to somebody before we came on. Did you know Alex Caruso is apparently a great athlete? It's like a Chris Hogan thing. Oh, serious? Yeah. Lax? Lax Chris Listen, Hogan? I love when that random dudes are the unbelievable athletes, but it kind of makes sense, right? He's like this bald white guy. He shouldn't be good at, in basketball, but he's obviously good. So maybe he's got all these other things he can do. Apparently, sneaky good athlete, Alex Caruso. Do you think That'd I'm a, a sneaky team. good athlete? Huh? Do you think I'm a sneaky good athlete? Well, I've seen you play basketball, so I know you're good. Well, this was, this was brought up earlier, but um, I don't want to... I know injuries aren't an excuse, but I had a cracked leg in that celebrity game. You did? It still haunts me. But James Harden was, like, the whole reason we're bringing up Westbrook is that, like, I know James Harden is a leader because he was my coach. And one of my favorite things from that whole thing was uh, I'm, I'm warming up, and they mic'd me up. Tarika was like, hey, I'm going to have ESPN mic you up for the celebrity game because you're going to be hilarious. And I was like, okay. And I wasn't. I was awful. I wasn't. Well, you got, because you got too intense. I was, it was way too, it was, I wasn't, it, but I also knew I wasn't good anymore because I hadn't been playing at all. And I walked out because the guy was like, all right, you're out there. And I was like, okay, sorry to be dramatic. So I was like, all right. And there was a PA headset on, all mic'd up. And he's like, Rosillo, get the fuck off of the court. You're not starting. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so it was, and I went back to the bench and like sat next to some kid from ABC. I was like, all right, cool. Like, let's, uh, let's go. <laughs> and then they, uh, Vegas set an over under at six and a half points, and I didn't really play in the first half. And that PA was Pat Muldowney. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was like, yeah. a, it was a higher up guy, and I was like, oh. And I wasn't going out there to be like, I'm awesome. Like, I knew I was one of the least famous. They didn't even have me on the Sprite MVP vote. Like, you could vote for your MVP with a text message. And you I was. You weren't even on there? I, there was two people that weren't options to even vote for. It was me and this other guy. And so I barely played in the first half, and I was like, I got to get some points. And I, I wasn't feeling good. And um, I, I sat next to James Harden, and I go, hey, I got to back in this game. And he was like, huh? huh? He was like, totally couldn't have been less interested. And I was like, all right, cool. And I just checked myself in, subbed a guy out. And Harden had nothing to do with it. I got my seven points. I pushed that kid from Hunger Games. I blocked Usain Bolt <laughs> clean. I got called for a foul. Uh, I got my seven points. I did a bird thing like that for, for you and Van Pelt. And then... Uh, when, I, when I coached, Snoop Dogg told me he wanted to come back in with like five minutes left. That's a tough and thing was, to do. It was not 100% friendly. What did he say to you? You, like, you put a suit on for that? You were into it. I had a it. suit on. Jalen and I had a big bet. I was really into it. And How much did you bet? Snoop, I think we did like two uh, Prime 112 dinners Ooh. in Miami. Yeah, it wasn't. So um, before the game, Snoop comes in the locker room. Not a shocker, reeks of weed. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to play him. Is that fair? Are you assuming? What? About Snoop. I'm just kidding. When he came to ESPN, he was like, I need to get high somewhere. 
listen, I'm not breaking news. But I, but he, and I was like, oh, so he's not going to want to play. He started the game because he was Snoop. Right. And he was like a great offensive rebounder. Like, he had a nice game. I was like, I really like Snoop's game. But, you know, and then in crunch time, he's like, coach, put me in. He said coach. Yeah, coach, put me in. Did you have I'm any like, assistance? I'm like, sure thing, Snoop. My assistant was Zach Lowe. I, I try to go, my first rebound, I try to go coast to coast because I was like, that's what I used to do, just dribble through everybody. And I was like, wow, I can't dribble anymore because I hadn't been playing. Yeah. And we, I turned it over and we went to timeout. And um, who's the secretary of education there who's a really good player? Ar Arnie Duncan. Ar Arnie Duncan was like on the bench. He's like, hey, hey, hey. So, and I was like, fuck off. Like, you know, we're up 20. Arnie Duncan was kind of too good for the game because he was doing not because of talent, but like his sophistication for like back. That around he's the like back. Doing, pass he's doing was, back cuts on right. Kevin Hart. It's like yeah, yeah. Kevin Hart's gonna lose you on defense. I'm positive. I was sending screens and like slipping them, and some guy, some some guy was sitting courtside, and like it was there was like a lull in the thing, and the and the guy like in the court courtside seats to the NBA celebrity game, and like the 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 alternative arena is is like that's a hard ticket to get and uh, the guy goes he goes he's like hey Rosillo I'm like, oh, you know he's like how many how many fucking screens are you gonna set that no one uses I was like fair good point fair and then I went back to my hotel room and I saw 1500 tweets about how bad my hair was and uh, to this day who was it? it was JB it was John Barry John Barry made fun of me the entire fourth quarter so all my boys were like are you gonna beat up John Barry I was like I'm thinking about it um, but he made fun of me the whole fourth he, quarter because I had a ball spot. Were you spot. friends? Yeah. yeah, we were pretty friendly, but you know, like that was the whole thing, and I got the over seven. But the funniest thing about that game is because of like Mike and Mike played in it, and they almost blew out every tendon in their entire bodies playing in the game. Like when I played in it, guys were like, "Oh my God, you're like you know pretty good," because I didn't just light myself on fire at midcourt. Yeah. Um, but when I got back to Boston, all my buddies were like, "You suck now," and I was like, "Yes." They're like, we talk so much shit about how good you are, and you played, you look terrible. I was like, yes, I'm not good. I had Michael B. Jordan, who was really fired up to be good, who like played high school in Newark, and just had like a bad game, and Kevin Hart on his team, wasn't getting the ball enough, and then missed a bunch of free throws at the end, and was like genuinely bummed out after. Like, well, he has. He I has, was like, dude, you get him next year. It was like one of those. Yeah, he was like be, devastated. See, I knew, I knew I was one and done. Like the next year, no, Michael I was B. Like, Jordan, I think, was thinking. I'm gonna put up like 38. So he played. He and I played in the Celebrity Beach Bowl for Directv flag football, mm -hmm. and that's my. We'll get back to the NBA here shortly, but three that was that was my all timer. With three minutes, that flew. Oh, they, they just did you the can keep going if you want. We can go to like 5:06. Yeah, whatever. they just they just unveiled the Raptors banner. Kawhi's there. Wow. Just kidding. He's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, do you want I, to talk about Clippers Lakers? No, I want to. I want to talk. To, I want to tell this Joe Montana story. And oh God, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> so, I'm, um, I'm on this. That's when I. That's when I first DM Meghan Markle too, and I don't know what happened to her, but um, I'm DM, playing corner. You DM Meghan Markle? Well, we got along really well at the event. You could have been Prince Ryan. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I think it would have been like, you want to go to Shellbacks again? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's so funny to some people, but not most. Um, <laughs> I go up, this is my, my, my dad loves the story, all my friends love the story, I've told it before, but I'm playing corner against some kid from like Friday Night Lights, who by the way, I think it was Scott, is his name, actor, he could have been nicer, and I felt bad he followed me, and I didn't follow him, then he unfollowed me, sorry dude. And I go at like halftime to Joe Montana and I was like, I was like, look, man, I go, totally get it. Like we're winning. Jesse Palmer was our quarterback. So hot. And I was like, is there any way I can get a couple touches yeah. on offense? And I had met Joe Montana a year before. Van Pelt and I did this thing in New Orleans where we hosted it. And Joe Montana couldn't be, he's as cool as you want him to be. Like he walks in, it's me, it's Van Pelt, I think it's Archie Manning. And Joe's like, anybody gonna grab a beer? You know, and you're like, oh my God, Joe Montana wants to have a beer with me. So I'd, I'd met him, so I was like, hey, you know, any chance I get a couple touches on O? And uh, he's like, well, you know, Ryan, I got, 
Fucking LaDainian Tomlinson and Tony Gonzalez bitching about me not getting touches, and they're both Hall of Famers. So, like, yeah, we'll try to work you in the offense. And I was like, <laughs> counterpoint. And uh, I did catch the game winning touchdown over Deion Sanders. Not a big deal. But uh, yeah, that was my Joe Montana story. You but did really, catch the game winning touchdown? Game winning touchdown. Over. Is that on the internet? It is. I can find it right now. Well, if we could find two Danny Ainge fights, I bet we could find that. Um, what else NBA do you have? Because um, I feel like we got de derailed there. I wanted to play a game oh, sweet. called... I forgot how awesome it is when I Google myself. I wanted to play a game called um, Do You Believe This Number? So they said Zion six to eight weeks. Do you believe that number? No, I don't. I mean, you know, I was, I was in a wormhole the other day of like some doctor and it was so convincing. I don't even know if it's true. I don't even know if the guy's a doctor. He had a great shirt. And... He was like, you know, the way he lands, there's like three different I ways. I saw that Wasn't video. Wasn't that so convincing? I want to hire that guy for the ringer. That guy was amazing. He was, he was so polished. I don't even know if he's right. He had like 150,000 subscribers. He had, he had of video of 150,000 views. He had a... Uh... Oh, there you go. Watch this. Dion totally gives up on my route. Dion. Desmond Howard. That's like Kevin Hart. Getting beaten back screen by Arnie Duncan. Oh, there you go. Oh, you spiked it. Desmond Howard's never talked to me since then. What were we talking about? I had a, I had an important point. China? No. What were we just talking about? Zion. Injury. The doctor kid you wanted to oh, hire. Oh, yeah. He had video of Zion, like, walking after the game. I know. Wasn't that nuts? In street clothes. He's, like, look at his gait. He's, his legs. He's putting pressure on the insides. It's like, like these happened. inverted knee things. Like, yeah. all I've been doing is checking out dude's legs since that video. I, uh... This was my big Greg Oden thing. I actually have a column that was probably a little too mean. I, I probably went overboard with it, but I wrote about watching him walk at the ESPYs and seeing him walk down a hallway and being like, that guy's not meant to play basketball. Like he, he was walking, taking strides, and it was like his body was going in six different directions. You know, where is he, like you see, I don't know, Kevin Garnett, and you just watch him run and you're like, that dude was meant to do this. This dude yeah, is right. just meant to play 1,500 basketball games. And then there are other people you see, like Andrew Bynum, and you're like, nah, that guy's not making it to 30. Workout buddy, Equinox. You and Bynum? We both have memberships. He looks great, by the way. <laughs> he does. Yeah? No, he looks, he's with my guy, Dwayne. Dwayne's the most jack guy at Equinox. Shout out to Dwayne. Uh, <laughs> oh, so another number. Um, they said Paul George, like around 10 games. To me, that sounds like 25. This is going to be the dumbest thing I say, which is saying something. <laughs> Paul George won't play a game this year for the Clippers? <laughs> no, because no, if I did that, I'd be back at ESPN. Um, they'd be like, we got to get this guy. He just said Paul George is going to play for the entire season. He'd be like, does he have any sources? No. Ticker. It's, it's fucking amazing. Ticker. You just get him out and be like, hey, do you want to come on and say Paul George is going to play? I'm like, yeah, all day. <laughs> um, Coming up on the jump. <laughs> Like, this guy has no clue, but he says Paul George is going to play. <laughs> Just a gut feeling. Yeah. Coming up next. Like, what do you base that on, Ryan? <laughs> Sources. Chutzpah. Uh, I'm picking Utah to win the West. Because, okay. Because. <laughs> right, wow. Right, right. right. Because everybody's doing Clipper Sixers. Because like, I was like, you know, I think I'm going to go Clipper Sixers. And then it went on for a week, and then two weeks, and I went, mm. I go, no. I go, I can't, I can't just pick Clipper Sixers. That's how I, I felt, and I, I still picked them. You, you did? You know, last year I did the whole everybody's picking Golden State Boston, so I'm just going to do Golden State Toronto. I also went on TV and said they're the best team in the East. I think you should sign with Rich Paul like Shams did. I almost did. Rich Paul? Those you guys, really almost did? Yeah, those guys love me. What did you think of Sham signing with him? Uh, I'm kidding, by the way. Um, I don't think they love me. Um, <laughs> These guys believe me. I uh, believed you. Well, I don't want, I don't want to turn it into a thing. Cause, uh... All right, we're going to turn it into a thing. I just thought it was interesting that somebody who reports on NBA information signed with No, but they, like have somebody... Mark they have Mark Jackson. Yeah, should they have Mark Jackson, though? I think we could do this thing. Like It's, it's kind of like... What is it, like Jess Mendoza and David Ross both are, are like, I, I, you know, honestly, I think that the conflict of interest thing happens so much that it doesn't even bother me anymore. Like, there's tennis analysts it that we have. It doesn't bother me either. It doesn't, like, I just don't think. 
The Shams thing, well, I, that one made me go, okay, so does that mean? He's gonna get every scoop? Anything that Rich Paul's agency does just goes to Shams because he's a client. It's in their interest to pump up his stock because they represent him. But then I was like, what do I care? I don't care how, I never cared about who broke what, who has what information, because eventually I'm gonna find out anyway. Yeah, but I think I, there, there's still value in, in like a, a Woj, when you know, like when Woj does it, you go, okay, like this is a thing. Like I don't, I'm, I, there's other guys that like, I think, I, agree. I guess keep, my point right. is the information Like is Shams is that same thing too, like I, I believe. But the information is gonna come out. Yeah, but there's there's still value in in being first all the time. Like, Dude, who was you... first today about with the Muhammad Sanu trade? Schefter. Uh, like, did you did you write in your notebook like another win for Schefter? I wasn't super he locked beat in Sanu on, by on two... Muhammad Sanu this morning. <laughs> he beat everyone by two minutes on Sanu. Like, I just think this whole arms race of who broke what story. I I never really understood it. The other thing that's funny about it too is like the credit part of it. You know, now they credit the agents. They're like. Uh, Jalen Brown signed a new extension. Right, yeah, the Credit agent. to his agent, Ryan Rossillo. It's like, what do I care what his agent's name was? I would have been a great agent. You should have been in, in the last season of Ballers. You could have been one of the guys The Rock talked to when he was in the car filming all his scenes in one day. Is that how he does it? He does every scene? Ryan, I told the Chiefs. <laughs> I told the Chiefs if I don't have an answer by tomorrow, we're done. I always wanted ballers to have like a notebook type of ending. Like he was dead the whole time. <laughs> well, that would be amazing. Yeah. I, I think, unfortunately. Because I have a theory on the rounders. That's true. What is Do it? You know this? What? Um, Totoro, yeah. Finish, he's dead. And Sixth Sense stole that from rounders. He's never in a scene with anybody else. What? Yeah, he's a dead person. Oh, he's just in a scene with Damon, that's yeah. it? No, he's in a scene when po he, at the uh, Chesterfield South. Dream. Dream sequence. Okay. Every other scene is just him with Damon. He's a dead person. It's, a sp it's like a, sp it's a guide, like a spirit guide. Can I make a Twitter suggestion for you? I think your new thing should be 10 minutes after news breaks and five people report it. Just Come say. in late. <laughs> hearing Jalen Brown extended just over and over again to see who gets mad. In, I can't. I'm doing it tonight. I I did a couple at <laughs> Schefter where I was like, can confirm. Hearing the Pistons aren't going to offer Thon Maker an extension before the deadline. Do you remember when Schefter tried to break the Durant thing, and guys were like, bro, <laughs> stay on <laughs> your side, like, take it easy. Uh, no, I yeah. In coming in super late. Right. No, uh, I'm just going to say the Astros have won the have won the ALCS. You know what I should do too is be like. Be like, can confirm Jalen Brown extension, Woody Page had it first. <laughs> Woody Page. Just credit like the wrong person every time. I love that can confirm 20 minutes after it's been confirmed is a good one. Yeah, now, the, all the mechanics of this, I, I don't understand. I don't know who's supposed to be scoring this. See, but like the ESPN part of it, like I did get, because it was explained to me one time, because I remember like, you know, ESPN was getting killed on the blogs all the time, being like, why are you guys just taking everybody else's scoop? And it's like, yeah. well, to be, to be realistic about it was like, it's ESPN, so it's like the thing. And until it has like the ESPN stamp, I know it sounds awful to other people that didn't work there or don't work there now, but like there was an official part of that where it's like, oh, all right, well, ESPN has it, so it well, must the be thing true. Not to say they didn't get shit wrong, but it's, it, was, it was like a real thing. And you know, honestly, once it's explained to you, you're like, ah, you know what, I actually kind of get that. But when the thing that we're doing was reports instead of just saying Yahoo. Yeah, that wasn't cool. That was, I thought, Do you remember when you and I got into a big fight about that? That was our what first tiff. I don't even remember this. We had I a do. tiff? Um, what was the tiff? I had, I had a trade for the Celtics like 04 or something like that, and I had it before everybody, but it didn't matter. I was on the station, nobody was listening to. And then you had it, and then the bottom line didn't credit you, and you got pissed about it. And then I was like, well, dude, I had it before you, but it was before, I think we were on MySpace, and I was just fucking <laughs> murdering you. And uh, I, I honestly don't remember this. I you remember, don't remember you had a, you know you had but a trade. I remember it was gonna, writing a column. It was about, about the bottom line. It was a you column were, about being on the ticket. Yeah, about you how gonna, stupid it was. Yeah, but you were gonna have your moment, and you were like those like those. Mother I think it was supposed to be a funny column, though, wasn't it? About oh, see, my one moment on the ticker. Because you're from Boston, I just it. assumed you were actually mad because I was. You know, oh. like, I was like, he must be really mad. But then well, I'm I glad said, you like, it out. 
I said, oh, and then uh, Sean Grandy had to get in the middle of it. And I Grandy, honestly don't remember You this. don't remember any of this? I'm this is, old. I don't remember like half the shit that's happened to me. And Grandy, I'll never forget, he called me up and was like, what did you say? And I was like, you can back up. Um, but he was like, what? And then we worked it out, man. And I called in, I called in Did once. we talk? No, it was like a weird Must thing. Must have been you an email? You didn't give me your cell phone number like a year ago. I which just is, got a cell a year ago. <laughs> No, but I was, I would so look, I, Blackberry. I'm not, I'm not even, but like you, I, I remember like you had heard good things about me when I was first working in Boston and then I thought I was going to be funny and I called in and called him the sports girl. <laughs> and, uh, you, you murdered me. You were like, oh my God, this is like the wrestler no one knows jumping into the ring right now. And I was like, oh. I don't remember that either. I was like, it's so accurate. I must have blocked all the bad stuff that's ever happened between <laughs> us out. Yeah, you're like, wait a minute, did I want to hire this guy? Now I'm just happy to be with Triple R. <laughs> Is that us? Is yeah, that we got to wrap, wrap up. All right. Game. Yeah, we got a game, man. It started. What's the score? It's know. four to one. Ten to four. Oh, it's updated. Updated, breaking news, 10 to four. That's it for Palooza. <laughs> that's it, right? That's it. So you can check out all the Palooza stuff on youtube.com slash ringer uh, or theringer.com. What do we have? We had the wine bottle team. We had uh, Take Hunter 4. We had, we had sports rewatchables. Half Hour Desktop, Sports Rewatchables. You were on me, you, and Chris Ryan. Doing, oh, yeah, that's Game 7. Doing that one. Game that was a tough game Kauai. to watch, rewatch. Uh, a yeah. whole bunch of other stuff. Go to youtube.com slash ringer. All right, yeah. And then Ryan Rosillo yeah. Show, subscribe. All right, this is awesome. Let's go.